Well, hello everyone. Matt Walker here from the Choir Director Corner, and I am here with the tutorial for The Choir Room is Lava, Solfege Aversion. So, I'm going to walk you through how you're going to access the game once you uh, receive uh, the email with the game and the game files, and then also walk you through how to play it. Also talk about some of the frequently asked questions. Okay, So the first thing is that once you purchase the game, you will receive an email with a Google Drive folder with the documents of the game contained in that folder. So once you open up that folder, you're going to find these four Google Slides projects. Okay, so the first one is the Choir Room is Lava Game Board, okay, which literally is just the home screen and then the game board, okay. Then you're going to have the Choir Room is Lava Soulfish Level 1, and then Soulfish Level 2, and then Soulfish Level 3. Okay, so those are the four Google Slides presentations that you will have. And while you can uh, print this off, you can take the PDFs and project them. I suggest the easiest way to play this is through Google Slides, whether you are sharing your screen virtually or whether you are projecting this onto a screen or a whiteboard in your room. Now you can print everything off and sort of play old school. Uh, and if you want to do it that way, I would suggest if you can, uh, laminating uh, both the game board and then also the Soulfish examples as well, just to help them stay uh, in good shape a little bit longer, okay? So you'll notice here with all these documents, they are currently view only. So the first thing that you will have to do once you open these up is you will need to make a copy. Okay. And so most of you are familiar with Google at all. You know what this looks like. You go to file, make a copy. You're going to select the entire presentation. Okay. And then it's going to ask you what you want to name it. I'm just going to leave it copy of. Okay. And so it's going to take a second and there it is. And so now you see all these different things pop up here and it no longer says the view only, right? Okay, so I'm going to close that out. And so I'm quickly going to go through and make a copy of each of these. Again, entire presentation. And so if I go back here, make a copy. And then last one. Very easy, very simple. And now you can download these, you can print these, you know, whether you're downloading onto your computer or downloading to your Google Drive uh, so that you can keep them for posterity. All right, so they are yours to keep once you do that and edit as you see fit. All right, so these view only documents, I'm just going to close those out because we don't need those anymore. Okay, so here is now our game board. And so if I click over here, this is what the game board looks like. And so you've got start to finish. Okay, now. I've set it up so that this, I'm clicking on this right now, you cannot move this, okay? There's nothing here that you can manip manipulate. However, these are the game pieces which take you to different spots on the board. If I go over here and I hold down, you see I select it and then I move it, okay? So these you can then manipulate. And so this is what you're going to use to show where the players, where the teams move to as they go through the game. Okay. And you could go through and change those colors if you wanted to. Um, you know, those are totally uh, editable in there. Okay. So I'm going to leave that right there. Now here, the bees, those are our bonus items. And so we will get to those in just a second. Okay, so this is your main game board, 
All right. So this is what you are going to uh, project, uh, whether it's onto your screen, onto your whiteboard, or onto uh, your sharing your screen if you're teaching virtually. Okay. Now another important uh, thing to mention here is that you must play the game in the quote unquote edit mode. Many of us are familiar with presenting or you're presenting uh, uh, a presentation, okay, or a project, all right. I cannot edit once I do that. See, I'm holding on that and trying to drag that. I'm no longer able to edit, okay. So I'm going to click out back out of that. And so what you can, though, do to make this bigger is when you go to view and you go to full screen, all right? And that makes it as big as you possibly can. And obviously, you know, you could go and do the full screen here as well. And that would make it a little bit bigger. So still very good size. And then if I want to get my menus back here, I just click ESC and there we go. Okay, so I'm back into it. So that's all that is in this first slides uh, presentation is the game board. But obviously that's the that's the most important one. Okay. Now the other three are then the different levels. Level one being the easiest, level two the medium, and then level three being the most advanced. And then the slides are simply the different questions. And so they are the different examples, the soulfish singing examples. Okay. Now you can do a couple of different things when, you know, we're going through the game. I like to choose randomly. And so you can go and, you know, just go to Google and pick random number. And then you can say one, two, and there are 50 examples at least to start with okay I'm going to be creating some more uh, for people that purchase the game but to start with there's 50 and so you just go 1 to 50 and then you can just generate and so then then you go to okay so level 1 number 41 okay and so you can do that so you can select these at random or you can actually uh, download a Google Chrome extension, a slides randomizer is what it's called, slides randomizer, and that will actually mix up these slides by random. And so then you can go through and go through the different examples that way. You can go through them in order. They are in no particular order. It's not uh, ascending or descending in difficulty. They're all relatively the same difficulty level. So you are certainly, there's no reason why you couldn't go through them in order. Um, it's just that, you know, you wouldn't want to start at number one every single time that you play the game. Otherwise, they would, students would get to know the first 10, 12 very well. So you've got level one, and then level two, and then level three. Okay, so you've got the three different levels. So going back to the board game. Okay, so the goal is you're trying to get from the start across the room then to the finish and all of these are the different steps along the way to the choir room is lava game board right so trying to get across so the green lines are connecting the different spots and so if you're there's no green line there then you can't go from one step to the next you can only go and take steps to where the green lines are, okay? So what I'd like to do is sort of go through the instructions with you, and then I can come back to the game board here and go through uh, that as needed. But I think that will help you the most is going through the different instructions, okay? So we've talked about how to download the files, so that's going to come to you in a Google Drive folder. And so when you open that up, you'll have the different presentations in there. You open those up and then you're going to make a copy. That's very important that you make a copy of each one. That way you can save it to your Google Drive to, uh, to keep. You can save it to your desktop. And then also, uh, you, when you're in view only, you won't be able to manipulate uh, the game pieces on the game board if it's a view only. So you've got to make sure that you make your own copy and so that... 
number one, you want to make sure that you have your own copy to keep. But then number two, you can then take that, especially with the game board, and manipulate that, as well as printing them off if you want to play sort of in the old school version. Okay, so making the copy. And then there's also in that Google Drive folder, um, you know, you're going to have the a PDF or image files of the Lava Game Board, the Soulfish examples, and then also there are some uh, bonus items there as well that are a little bit different. So if you want to play sort of the old school version uh, tabletop, uh, then you've got those materials as well that you can simply print them out. And again, I suggest that you uh, laminate them if you have access to uh, laminating sheets or uh, to a laminator that will help to preserve uh, preserve all of the pieces of the game. And then you're also going to get this PDF guide as well. So, you know, don't worry. You don't feel like you have to stay here and take notes. Uh, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, but you will have this PDF guide as well. So you have all of the instructions right at your fingertips. Okay. So there are two ways that uh, sort of the, is intended to play this game. I'm sure there are probably more, uh, but two methods uh, to play this version of The Choir Room is Lava. One is to play collaboratively, or two is to play competitively. Now, in both methods, you can have individual players or you can have teams. It's totally up to you. Okay. The goal is slightly different. In collaborative play, players or teams are working to get all the players' teams across the choir room. So you're working together. Okay. And the goal is to get everyone across the choir room from start to finish in the fewest moves possible. So, you know, if you are playing this virtually, you're sitting with a pad and pencil and you are just doing a check mark every time that there is a move, every time that there is a step attempted, essentially. Okay. If you're playing this uh, in person, and, you know, if you've got a whiteboard, you're simply just making uh, a check on uh, the whiteboard with, with your marker, right? To count how many, t how many uh, turns it takes the group to get everyone across. Okay. Um, and then if, you know, playing in person, the old tabletop version, very simple, you know, paper and a pencil, and you're just doing the, the X to check mark with each turn. Now in collaborative play, all bonus items must be collected in order to complete the game. Okay, now we're going to talk about the bonus items and where those are in just a second, all right? But that is important. All bonus items must be collected in order to complete the game. So you're not going to be able to take just the quickest route, but there's going to have to be teamwork so that all of those are collected um, on your path from start to finish. And if players work in teams, they may collaborate and complete each task together. Or team members can take turns to complete tasks on their own. So it's totally up to you. You've got some uh, singers that are pretty inexperienced and maybe sort of self-conscious about singing. Then you might go the route of small groups or teams. And so then when they are singing these, you know, you, you know, once you give them that example, that soulfish example, I usually take, say 30 seconds. So I've got my phone right there. And so I've just got my stopwatch uh, and so my little timer. So I'll count off 30 seconds. And then after the 30 seconds is up, then they attempt to sing the example. So in this case, you could just have the small group or the team, depending on how big the team is, they could just all attempt to sing that together. Okay. Now, how do you give them the starting pitch? You don't necessarily have to give them the specific pitch. You know, say, you know, it starts up on a G and it goes all the way to the top of the staff. You know, choosing a pitch that um, is going to be comfortable for them to sort of complete that exercise. Or you can literally just say, pick a starting note that is comfortably in your range and telling them, okay, you need to make sure as you look at this, does this mostly go up or does it go down? Well, you need to plan ahead, right? It's like when you see groups that sing happy birthday and they start way too high and they get to the high part and then they screech, right? Same thing, if they start too low and the melody tends to go downward, then it's gonna end up being too low. 
So it, lots of uh, flexibility there as far as that starting pitch. They don't necessarily have to uh, sing. You know, if it starts on an E, they don't have to necessarily start specifically on an E. They just need to make sure that they identify that pitch. Okay, okay what's, your, what's your starting pitch? What's your do? Mm, okay, and then they need to make sure that they stick with that as they sing through the example. Now, to play competitively, the game, again, can be played as individual players or as teams. In competitive play, players or teams work to get across the choir room. Now, the goal of the competitive play is to get across the choir room the fastest. So they don't necessarily have to pick up all of the bonus items in this version, okay? But the bonus items play a little different part of the process here. In competitive play, the bonus items allow players the ability to reduce the difficulty level of a question by one level. And a bonus item may only be used on one turn. So you can only use it once and that's it. Then the bonus item is gone. Okay. So really quickly, let me show you on the board where those are at. So the bonus items are plus signs. So with this one, this is a three plus. So it's a difficulty level of three, but then if they complete that step, they sing it correctly, then they get that bonus item. And so then there's a two plus here, another three plus here, and then another three plus here. All right. So there's four bonus items total. Now, when playing competitively, I mentioned that you can lower the difficulty level by one level one time on one turn. So say I come around here and I get this three plus, I get to the two and I go to the three plus and I get it correct. So I get the bonus item. So say then I want to come through here and I do through the two and the two and maybe even I get the second one, right? Or maybe I skip that one and I go right here and get the two plus here. So then I get to the two, but then if I'm going to the piano in the middle, then that's a level four. And we'll get to level four in a minute because there's really no level four. It's a level three, but it's got an added component to it. Okay. But I've got my bonus item. So I can say, you know what? I'm going to play my bonus item. So instead of a level four, it's a level three. Okay, which it's the same level of question, but there's a difference there between a four and a three, which we'll get to in just a second. Okay, and so then if I miss it, then I stay in that same spot and I don't get to use it again. Okay, and so that's how this general moving across the board works. If I'm here at the start and I say, okay, I'm going to step here. And so I try the number one and I get that right, then I get to move my game piece. If I don't get it right, if I get it wrong, then my game piece stays where I uh, was previously. Okay, so I just don't get to move. So if players work in teams, they may collaborate and complete each task together or team members can take turns to complete tasks on their own. So same as collaboratively, they can work on these together Okay, and then they can sing the exercise together or they could say, okay, well, if there's four people on a team, then each turn, one of those team members takes their turn. And so then they, it's their turn to sing that example uh, on their own. Okay, again, just depends on what your preference is and what you think the comfort level is of your singers and how experienced they are with Soulfish. So there's lots of flexibility there. Okay. Now, uh, as I've mentioned, there are three ways to play The Choir Room is Lava. You can play this virtually, in person with tech, or old school, okay? Virtually or in person with technology, it's going to work very much the same way. It's just that how you are allowing them to see the gameplay, right? Virtually, you're sharing your screen. In person with technology, you're projecting that. Uh, onto uh, a whiteboard or onto your uh, drop screen, okay? Old school then is you just print everything off and and you just play like a old school tabletop board game. Now for that, the game pieces, you can use whatever you want. So you can use coins, paper clips, whatever you have in your classroom will work for, uh, work for the game pieces, okay? 
Now, navigating the board, I've talked a little bit about this, but I want to clarify, okay? So the steps are shown as squares with numbers in them. The numbers identify the difficulty level of the question that goes with that step, okay? So you see the numbers, some obviously some of the, a couple of them have bonus items, okay? Now, in order for players to move to the next step, they must answer a question correctly. So if they start here, and they can, they've got two options. They can say, okay, so where would you like to go? I would like to go there, okay? So here is your level one question, okay? If you get this one right, and so their game piece is here, then you could say, okay, you've got three options. Where would you like to go? To this one, this one, or that one. And so then they can pick. I want to go to the number three. Okay. Well, then here's your le level three question. And then if they get it right, then you would move your their game piece to that spot. Okay. If they answer incorrectly, then they just stay on their current step. Now, here are the difficulty levels. I mentioned this, right? Level one is beginning. Level two is intermediate. And level three, then, is the advanced. Now, I mentioned there are a few fours on the board, okay? So here's what those mean. A number four on a step is a difficulty level three question. So you're still going to pick the example from the slides project that is the difficulty level three. However, if a player or a team attempts to move to a level four step but answers incorrectly, then they must move back to their previous step. So it's the same level of difficulty as a three, but there's a little extra risk there. Okay, so for instance, if I'm here on level three and I'm attempting to go to the four, so I get a level three question, but I get it incorrectly, then I've got to go back to my previous spot. So then I would have to redo this one and then I'd have to redo that one again. Okay, so you can see there's sort of a risk reward strategy here that's a part of this game. Okay, so you've got, I believe, four steps that have a four. There's one, two, three, and then four. Okay, now with the bonus items, you could lower all of those to a three. So if I'm here, that's not a good example. If I'm here and I've already got a bonus item, and so I go here, I want to go there, say, okay, I'm going to lower that to a level three. Okay. It's still a level three question. However, if I get it wrong, I don't have to go backwards anymore. Okay. Now, say I didn't have a bonus item. Say I was here at the two. I've come uh, from here, but the, maybe the, uh, the bonus item was already gone. Okay. It's only one bonus item per spot. So if someone else comes along that spot, you can't do it again. All right. That's my rule. You could change the rules if you want, but that's my rule. Okay, so say I came along this way. This was already gone, so I don't have a bonus item. I come to here. I attempt this, and I get it incorrect. So I would go back. I don't get to try for another bonus item just because I'm going back to that square. Okay, can't double dip on the bonus items. I think that's what I'm trying to say. All right, so that's how the level four plays into it. Now, there are a number of steps on the game board that include a plus sign. Those are the bonus items, which I've already talked about that. And again, the difference between collaborative play and competitive play. Okay, Collaborative, they must collect all of those items. The items in the collaborative do not reduce the difficulty level. It's just something that they must con uh, connect, uh, collect uh, as they're going through the game. In competitive play, that is where they serve as those uh, reducers of the difficulty level, okay? Now, one caveat to that, the difficulty on the blue stereo cabinet step cannot be lowered. The stereo cabinet is really wobbly, and it's just too risky to use any special items. So the very last step, you cannot reduce that to a level three, okay? Has to stay a level four. Again, a little extra risk reward as we get to the end of the game. So if you're curious what to all these uh, icons on the board, what they stand for, I came up with this uh, game board legend for you. So you've got the grand piano, the doorway, the little brown curved squares 
those. Those are our choir chairs, all right, which happen to be standing uh, up on uh, probably are some of some of our lower choir risers, just high enough to where they're above the level of the lava. And then we do have some choir risers that are sticking out. The larger black square, that is the conductor's chair. It's a little bit larger, a little bit sturdier than our regular choir chairs. And then you've got a music cabinet, our stereo cabinet, which we just talked about, our table. I thought it would be fun on the one wall. Those are our acoustical tire tiles, sort of like uh, rock climbing on that wall. That's how they're getting across the wall there. And then the big gray square is, of course, our podium. And then, of course, our game pieces and our bonus items. Okay, so that is our game board legend. So now some frequently asked questions. I'm just going to breeze through these here really quick. How many players can play? Really, it's totally up to you. Okay, individual players, I'd say at least three. If you're doing teams, if you just have two teams going on, that's fine. Um, I would say, you know, with teams, two to four, I think works well. If you get to five teams, it starts to slow the game down a little bit. Um, so I would suggest teams wise, two to four. Um, individual players, you know, three to five, you know, maybe even up to six. You know, I do six game pieces. You can always, uh, uh, copy and paste those game pieces so if you want to make more you can do that so again that's totally up to you but again it's a balance of how much do we get everybody to participate but at the same time we want to keep the game moving as quickly as I can how should I create teams well there's lots of ways you can do that um, you could select students alphabetically you could have them count off you know saying four teams okay one to four go Okay, team one, team two, team three, team four. Um, you could even do it by section. That would really ramp up the competitive juices. Sopranos versus tenors versus altos versus basses. You know, see who gets bragging rights there. But lots of different ways. Okay. When using teams, who chooses to move around the board and who answers the question? And so I would have uh, specific people on each team. If you've got uh, four people on a team, then they just rotate and then they take turns. Okay. So that person, whoever's turn it is on that team, they choose where to go. Okay. They can obviously talk with their team members and collaborate with them. And then once they get the, the soulfish example, then you've got 30 seconds where then they can talk with them and, uh, and go through that example. And then it's totally up to you. Do they sing it together or do they sing it as an individual? Individual. Totally up to you. Okay, probably depends on their experience level. What do the green lines on the game board represent? Again, those are the connections to the steps on the path. Okay, so if there's no connection with a green line, then they cannot attempt to jump to that step. How do players answer a question? Again, this is going to depend on the experience level and the familiarity of your singers with Soulfish. But there are different ways that you can do this. Okay, For one, uh, if they're just getting uh, an introduction into Soulfish, you could have the teams or the players identify the Soulfish syllables for each note in the melody. Okay, Now, each melody, each example is four measures. So you could just have them essentially read from left to right and they could speak and identify the soulfish syllable that they would use for each note. That's one option. Okay. Two, if you want to work rhythm into it, you could have them chant the soulfish in rhythm. So do, do, re, mi. You know, they won't have to necessarily sing the pitches, but that works the rhythm into it. Or if you really want to uh, work uh, the practice of singing uh, with soulfish, then you could just have them go ahead and sing it. Again, if they're a little bit more self-conscious, have them singing in a group rather than as an individual. Now, the required level of proficiency of their response is also up to the discretion of the instructor. So if you want to give them a little leeway, you know, if they mess up one syllable or one pitch, but then they fix it and then they continue on and they sing the rest of it correctly, then, you know, that could be your standard, right? Do they have to have it 100% perfect or are we looking at 96%? Right. If we are jumping from one spot to the next, jumping over a lava, chances are it's not going to be exactly perfect every single time. So maybe there's a little leeway there. But again, that's a disc uh, up to the discretion 
of the director. Now, what if my singers are really shy? There's a couple of things that you can do. We've talked a little bit about this. You could have the singers sing the soulfish examples together with their team. Or you could use what I like to call the save option. So say a singer goes through it and they, uh, they get stuck and they, they sing it incorrectly. Okay. You could then say, okay, is there a team member that can save them? And you could, uh, you could pick a specific person or you could uh, ask for volunteers, right? And so then after a quick review, you know, you give them 10 seconds to uh, review the example, you could have that person sing with the original person. So two people then sing together uh, on the save option, okay? Or you could just have that person ask, okay, where did I go wrong? And have them tell them. I think to me, you know, if chances are if they miss it, they're probably getting a little self-conscious. So do the save option and give them someone to sing with them. Okay, that's just a, uh, an option. And if they sing it correct, it's like, okay, nope, you're stuck on that spot. And then the, t- the game goes on to the next team or the next, the next player. What does a turn in the game look like? So really quickly, we're just going to talk through these steps. Okay, At the beginning of the turn, the player selects the step that they will jump to attempt to jump to. The instructor then randomly chooses a question that corresponds with the same difficulty level. So you can randomly pick a number 1 to 50 or again you can randomize the slides. The player team then attempts to complete the task. If they're successful their game pieces move to the next step and if they're not then they remain on their current step. Now what's the difference between the three difficulty levels? So I give you a more specific description. Okay. Now, all in this version, all of the soulfish examples are in a major key. They're all four measures, and they all start on do. Now, I will be creating different sets of soulfish examples. Uh, I'll be uh, creating a set of minor examples, and then I'll be creating uh, more sets of examples that the difficulty level is a little bit harder if you've got more experienced, more advanced level singers. So there's more sets that you can then take and build into the game, which I think will really be fun. But for this one, level one, two, and three. So level one, uh, the melody only stepwise motion, and there's only quarter, half, and whole notes. Okay, it does include dotted notes and rests. Okay, level two, you've got intervals up to a fourth, but only quarter, half, and whole notes, and again includes dotted notes and rests. Level three, the intervals stay the same. Intervals up to a fourth. It tends to be less stepwise motion, but there's nothing bigger than a fourth. But here we add eighth notes. Okay, so those are the differences between the three difficulty levels in this version of The Choir Room is Lava. Now, what's a good way to pick a random number? We already talked about it. Getting into Google and pick a random number or, uh, you know, you could just draw numbers out of a hat if you wanted to. You know, something simple, something that's going to move the game along quickly. Okay. Can there be more than one player on a step? Certainly. However, here's where the freedom comes in. Feel free to change it up. So what would you say, how would this affect strategy if you said uh, players on different teams could not be on the same step? Or that there could only be one player on a step at a time, right? These are different wrinkles that you can add into the game. Maybe after you've played it several times, you start to tweak the rules a little bit. Okay, totally up to you. Lots of flexibility with this. How many game pieces should we use? So basically one game piece per player. And then if you're working on teams, one game piece per team. Okay, so you don't want multiple game pieces for a team running about, right? Um, And again, if you're playing old school, uh, feel free to use whatever you have on hand. Can I lower the difficulty of any square with a bonus item? All except for the stereo cabinet. That square cannot have its difficulty lowered. Okay. And that is it. And so there's our bonus items where you can take those in with the PDF and cut those out. But that is it as far as the FAQ and the instructions. Uh, It's really, it's that easy. Okay, and again, with the view, I would go full screen just to make it a little bit larger. OK, 
Okay. And then when I want to get back to my menus here, I simply hit ESC and it's going to go right back to it. Okay. So that is it, my friends. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be coming up with different, uh, different sets of questions uh, for the choir room is lava. So there'll be uh, different soulfish versions. Um, we'll probably do a musical terms uh, version. We'll do a rhythm version with Takadimi or whatever system uh, that you use. I like to use Takadimi with my students, but lots of different applications uh, for uh, playing this game with your students. So what I would like to have happen is as you're going through this, please, please, please send me an email if you have any questions. Again, it's matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at choir director corner. Dot com. Shoot me an email. Let me know how things are going. Let me know if you have ideas as far as how to maybe tweak things a little bit. And also let me know what versions you would like to see. You know, maybe there's a music history version. Maybe there's a composer version. Um, I mentioned musical terms, a music theory, maybe a key signature identification, note identification, all sorts of different applications that I would be happy to create and put them together for you. So you don't have to go through the hours and hours uh, that it took to create all of this and putting it together. I could easily put it together for you so that you can uh, share this with your students. So I hope you enjoy The Choir Room is Lava. Again, let me know how I can serve you further. Best of luck. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.